Hi everyone and welcome to episode 9 in our Ability System tutorial series. In this series we'll be going over how to create an Ability System in using Blueprints um, such as what you see here. So previously we worked on the Fiber one and last time we worked on our AOE uh, drop which was this holy ground like so. So what I'm going to start doing today is starting to take a look at how we work the buffs system. Okay, so the buff system is a bit more advanced um, as it involves a few extra layers to it. So let's get started with the buffs. So previously we have created the ability buff sub parent. Okay, and this is the uh, the parent of all your buffs that you can have in your game. So in here we need to open it up. So we can start work on filling out the details inside this parent. So the way the buff system works is that we're going to spawn these buff spells out into the world and attach them to uh, the character we're buffing, in this case the player. And to begin with we're going to set up the animation for this buff. So it'll play the animation and then tell it to activate its effects and so forth. So to begin with we're going to look at the begin play and in here we're going to drag in our skeletal uh, not skeletal mesh, yeah, skeletal mesh, sorry, of the player reference. So I need to get the player reference, which we've got already. We're just going to scroll down and get the player reference. This is something we set up in a previous episode. From there, we can get the mesh. Again, scroll down to the bottom, you'll find your resources or the variables. And from that mesh, we can take the player montage. And the montage we're going to play is the same one we've done in the last episode. Okay, so we're going to do the AOE montage. That should be fine. Hit compile. Now, we need to now access our cast ability uh, event. And the cast ability event is going to be called when we have a cast ability, be it on the end of a cast bar or instantly. Now, previously we've been adding the parent function to this by adding a call to parent function. However, in this case, we don't want to do that. Now, here's why. The ability parent, one which the ability buff comes from, it will, first of all, start off attaching on begin play to the caster of the of the spell. Okay? So, the cast ability then detaches it from the caster. So, for example, on our fireball, it left the, left the player's hands and off into the world. Now, with the buff, we don't want to do that necessarily. We want to attach it to the whoever we want the buff to be applied to. So what we're going to do is tell it not to call the parent function of the cast ability. Therefore it will never call this detach. Okay? That way it be attached to the, whoever's casting it, in this case the player, and will then when we take it to tick its effect or apply its effect, it knows who to uh, apply it to because it's got the its owner. Okay. So with that done, we need to tell it when to clear the buff. Okay, tell it when to die. Now, all actors inside your game start off with a class default setting for their lifespan, initial lifespan here. And the lifespan here um, basically tells it when or how long it should last before it's removed from the game. So what we need to do here is tell this initial lifespan to change as soon as we take it to cast ability. So I'm going to right click here and go set lifespan okay and on in lifespan it's going to be the value for how long this buff is going to last so for that i'm going to set up a variable and call it buff lifespan and we're going to compile it and set a default value of three and we're going to drag that into our float variable there and what we do now is tell it to apply the buff. Now I've gone ahead and created two functions. We've got the apply buff and we've got the clear buff. So create these two functions in your uh, parent ability uh, buff. And on the cast ability, we're just going to drag out our apply buff to the cast ability. Okay. And the apply buff is going to do what we expect it to do. It will tick the actual effect onto the, onto the player. Now, depending on what kind of a buff you've got, this may be repeatable. Um, this may be on a, a, like a ticking thing, so it may be like gaining health every so often, or um, I don't know, whatever it may be. But essentially, this is going to be the thing that triggers the a buff. Okay, 
So the apply buff is going to handle the ticking of the spell. Now it's going to tick straight away as soon as the ability is cast. But if you need it to loop, well that's something you need to set up here. So what we'll do here is set up the tick if it applies. So on cast ability, we want to set up the tick buff event. So set timer by event. And the event's gonna be a custom event called tick buff. And we're gonna drag and connect that to our timer. And the time it's going to take is gonna be the tick rate of our buff. So I'll make a new variable and I'll go buff tick rate. And I'm gonna drag that into that loop timer there. It will be looping, so I'm gonna tick the looping button. And for the sake of um, being able to control it later on, we're gonna take the return value here and promote it to a variable. Buff tick timer. That way we can access it and do things as we wish later on. Now, because it's going into this new event here, the tick buff, by default, our parent's not gonna have anything on it. We're gonna leave it blank. That way, by default, this buff will apply once and that's it. However, if you want to do something in particular, then that in particular can be made on the individual instance of that buff. Hope that makes a bit more sense than what I'm trying to describe in my head. But essentially, um, once it, once we create uh, our own custom uh, buff, we'll be able to customize a tick buff event to include whatever we want. Okay. So if we want it to do something special every so often, you can change that on the individual ability. Okay, so I'm gonna hit compile. And from there, I think we are done. So we hit save and we can close that down. Okay, we're done for that for now. So what we're gonna do is start setting up the instanced um, ability, the specific ability we'll be testing with. So I'm gonna go add new, new folder and call it buffs and we're going to right click on our ability buff and create child and this is going to be buff and we call it fortitude and we'll drag that into my folder here so let's open up our buff fortitude and in here we're going to set a few things up so name is fortitude description increase health of the player of the caster shall we say of the caster cost we'll say is 0.1 cooldown we'll say is five seconds cast time is zero zero incident interrupt will not not and icon we'll set to fortitude here then we're going to close that and come back to it later on next we can do it add it to our action bar so let's just go and manually add it to our action bar here so I'm going to set this one here to buff fortitude and leave that as it is. So now if I push the play button. So now I can test and click here and you can see the 31 changed the 32 actors here to show it again. Hit play and it changed from 31 to 32. Indicating that it spawned the spell. It's invisible because it has no appearance. Um, but that will do for now. Now, the issue we need to fix is the duplication of these buffs. So, for example, if I hit this one and hit again and again and again and again, you can see the buff count goes up. So, it's up to 36 now. So, that's obviously not correct because we want it to basically replace the current buff that's there. So, when we click on it, we'll need to change how that works. And we'll do that in the next uh, episode. So, join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan uh, Donation just $1 gets you access to that video, plus many, many others, um, as well as many other benefits as well. Big shout out and thank you to all my supporters so far on uh, Patreon, as well as my YouTube memberships. Thank you so much, guys, for your generosity. It has been amazing. Um, so, thank you so much. If you like what I do, Please subscribe to the channel and hit, don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.